close attention because I'm only going to say this once. Ja- Jackie Reed, inside her story. She's not in New York, up in Harlem this morning, but home in Atlanta. Yes. Jackie Reed, good morning. Good morning, Tom Joyner. Good morning, Sybil. Good morning, Guy. Happy Friday, everybody. Are you Good in morning. line for the slutty vegan already? Are you in line? <laughs> okay. Not yet, but okay. it's coming. Okay. You know, she's about to open up her third location, and she still has a food truck. That's my girl. <laughs> nice. Good morning, Kiki. Shout out. Thor, too. Okay. So yesterday, Tom, the hashtag Black Women's Equal Pay went viral, mm. as did the hashtag Black Women Can't Wait. And that's because black women are paid 61 cents for every dollar made by a white non-Hispanic male, which adds up to a loss of more than $23,000 a year, Mm. or get this, more than $900,000 over the course of a 40-year career. Imagine what you could do with all that money. Mm. Uh. Mm. So, I know, I know, it's upsetting. And black women at this pace would have to wait until 2119 to reach pay parity. I'm going inside her story with Tina Sherman, the campaign director of breastfeeding and paid leave for MomsRising.org. Good morning, Tina. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks for being here. This is such an important issue that often is overlooked until this day comes around. But let me ask you, since you work um, specifically with paid leave, I want to start there. Um, What's missing that we don't know about that could particularly impact black women, especially black mothers, when it comes to paid leave? Well, I appreciate your your um, your opening there um, with the, the 61 cents on average for black women. When we look at black moms in particular, um, they're actually making just 54 cents on every dollar compared to white men. Um, and, and, you know, what that ends up meaning is that for me as a black woman, I have to work nearly, a black mom, I have to work nearly 20 months to be paid what white men are paid in just 12. Um, and when we look at um, what could help um, you know, eliminate this pay, uh, this pay gap, paid leave is a, a critical part of that, um, as well as the Paycheck Fairness Act. It actually just passed the House earlier this year, um, and we need Mitch McConnell in the Senate to uh, take action on that. Um, paid sick days and paid family medical leave, um, would, both of these policies would help moms and caregivers stay attached to the workforce. Um, many, many families choose um, to, to leave the workforce because they can't afford to, um, to, to take time off um, to, uh, to take care when their families need caregiving. Which is a big deal, particularly because women, especially black women, we all know so well, are often caregivers in the household. So when they can't take that time off to work, you know, they're they're losing money, right? Or possibly losing jobs. Absolutely. The, the, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Tina. I just say the, the, the wage gap, it persists. You know, I want to be clear, it persists um, across all occupations and all levels of uh, education. And it's a, a very um, painful part of our history when it comes to structural racism. Um, and, you know, we really need, you know, the, the black women can't wait. We really need to tackle this today. We, we cannot wait. Mm. And what would you say is our, in terms of a strategy, and, and I know the conversation has been going on in, you know, for years and years, but uh, in terms of where we are now and, and, a, and a strategy going forward? Well, Moms Rising really sees this as a multi-pronged approach. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it's not, it's not just going to take one course of action. Um, paid family medical leave is going to be a big step in that direction, um, along with um, protecting workers' ability, the right to co- uh, collectively bargain. Um, we want to see fair scheduling practices that allow employees to meet their caregiving responsibilities. We want to see an increase in the minimum wage, especially for tip workers. Um, and we want to see an increase in the availability of high quality, affordable child care so that moms and other caregivers can stay attached to the labor force. Tina, you mentioned Mitch McConnell um, and Moms Rising has been fighting for equal pay for women um, for a long time. What's the biggest hurdle? Is it on um, a federal level with Congress or because I know some state legislatures are making um, strides? 
the, um, th- that is the case. And you know, it's incredibly exciting that the House this year finally passed the Paycheck Fairness Act. Um, and, and, you know, that was a huge step forward to, of recognizing that this is an issue that needs to be tackled. Um, and now we're, you know, it's just sitting at Mitch McConnell's desk and, you know, we just need him to, to bring it to the Senate floor. And, and do you see any progress in terms of uh, representation? I, I, you said in the House, but certainly um, with one black woman in the United States Senate uh, and, and, and pushing forward for this, do you see any other support or, or in terms of the Senate members? Um, we've had um, many of many Senate, um, many of the senators um, express their support, um, but you know the Senate operates slightly differently than the House. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> um, so um, you know the fact that one um, senator can hold up a piece of legislation um, is just harmful, um, and so that's that's what's happening here. But Tina, what's what's the pushback? I mean, what what's the justification on the other side just for not providing equal pay? Why is this so hard to get done? What's the argument against equal pay? I, I honestly, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe take the naive approach and just say that uh, folks don't understand that this is a problem, um, and um, you know that was part of the reason why you know we felt it was really important yesterday to lift up mm-hmm. that um, you know it, it took um, almost 20 months um, for for a, a black woman to earn what a white white man has. Um, and, you know, recognizing that this is an issue, um, I think that just the public at large doesn't always understand. So I appreciate that you're doing a spot to, you know, raise awareness, but I think that has a lot to do with it. You know, really just raising the awareness that this is an issue that women face. And, you know, it almost, you know, $950,000 $950, in, in, um, in annual wage or in lost wages over a course of a career, uh, you know, that's a lot of money that could go back into and, our... And, and, and it might seem like uh, uh, just an incredible number, but when Jackie broke it down to $23,000 a year, it's just, that's a little bit more manageable in your it's head huge. and thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but I find the mute button has been pushed by a lot of people in not responding to this. I know that black men, you, you know, make, what is it, 78 cents on the dollar and, and, and or somewhere in that area. So they're not making their, their just either. But I, I'm not feeling the, the, the love and support from, from them either in regard to this issue. Or is this just on us to, to, to continue it? Oh, I'd like to not think it's just on us, but we, we are going to have to keep fighting this and lifting it up, telling our stories um, and making sure that it doesn't leave the headlines, that this is an issue. Um, and I appreciate that you're doing this fight and, you know, we're going to continue to fight this fight. So, Tina, what advice would you give on an individual level to a black woman who knows she's not receiving equal pay on a job? If you were, if someone came to you and said, this is my situation and laid out you know, the evidence, what advice would you, like, what can it, what can we do? Um, you know, depending on what state she is in, um, I, you know, I might suggest that she seek legal counsel. Um, and also, you know, she can check in with what the HR policies are. Uh, it does get very tricky. Um, you know, women are underrepresented in um, low earning jobs. And, um you know, it gets very tricky when you want to go to your employer and question. And we don't talk what, about it. Right. Exactly. No one talks about it. Exactly. That's the problem. So we need to be talking about it amongst ourselves for sure. Not that we're proud of it, but, <laughs> we, you know, it's, <laughs> you're just kind of there going, oh, geez, what do I say? Yeah. Right. It's so true. All right. Well, Tina Sherman, yeah. the organization is MomsRising.org. Thank you so much, Tina. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Jackie. Thank you.